Ready? Hello guys, uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the press conference between Jamshed Kohl FC and Kerala Press University. Today we have with us coach Ivan Kumanovic and player Hishan. We can go ahead with the questions. First question is for Hishan. Thank you. Hello Hishan, welcome to Jamshed Kohl. Thank you. So, how does it feel to be back here at the Bombay Club? It's it's nice. It's always nice to be back in a place that you've played and, and competed in. So yeah, it's nice to be back and looking forward to tomorrow. So my first question uh, is that uh, you have the real privilege of playing at Spain with many endless different players getting opportunity. Signing for a La Liga club like CD, uh, uh, Now, uh, the question which a lot of people ask that who after changing the national team? Probably you have been playing at the clubs like FC Goa, Jamshedpur FC uh, and Kerala Blasters playing under four different coaches. So, this question always comes that can Ishan Pandita take the book, uh, fill the boots of Sunil Shetri after his retirement? And the question always remains that he is not getting much time on the pitch. That he always been corrupt told as a super sub, super sub. So, do you think, as per your observations and as per your experience playing in India so far, do you think that after Shetri, if given much opportunity, you could be the one leading the goal scoring uh, part for Indian national team? Um, I would always say yes. I mean, there will be a big spot that will be open that needs to be filled after after he's done playing. So it's anybody's opportunity to take it, and uh, I will do my best, and I will, and I will. S hopefully, I can I can take that place as well. Thank you. Uh, can I ask in Hindi? Okay. okay. Uh, last game, आप लोगों का JFC के साथ जो match था वो JFC दो तीन से जीत गया था और आप लोग का 18 गेम हो चुका है और आप लोग जो पोजीशन है टेबल पॉइंट में आपका पोजीशन जो है फिफ्थ है तो ये मैच कितना क्रूशियल होने वाला है और इसके लिए क्या स्ट्रेटजी है सुपर कप का सुपर कप एवरी गेम इज इज क्रूशियल राइट नाउ एट द स्टेज बोथ टीम्स हैव have a lot to play for. Uh, we're also fighting to, to make the playoffs. So tomorrow is a big game for us and we'll be looking to get three points. Uh, hello, coach. So, hello. hope you have enjoyed your break, much needed break after a long time playing football. So, well, you know, the break, uh, I stayed in Kochi uh, working with, uh, with some injured players and the players who stayed. So. Yeah, it was it was active break, I'd say. We saw your picks in the side settle in the Kerala Yeah, yeah, that was kind of uh, recovery period. <laughs> so uh, I'll begin straight away with the most important question, which I think people from Kerala are asking to ask this question. Uh, there has been a kind of uncertainty going around the future of uh, players like the yeah, individuals, the amount of and Pedro, uh, and including you as well. A lot of rumors going on about whether Ashan will remain in Kerala after the season because. We have been experiencing your football and we have loved the impact that we have been playing so far for the last three years. And Kerala probably have been knocking the doors of the finals and probably the first trophy for the decade. But the uh, rumours and also uncertainty of your future and players like Kerala has always been there. So, uh, could you please share some insights on uh, whether the future of players like Diamant Tapos and you, how do you see this after the season? Well, you know, rumours will always be, always be rumours. You know, the things sometimes that you cannot control uh, going online, but we sometimes do not know from where does it come from. You know, there, there, there were rumors like uh, when I saw like uh, ex goalkeeper of Real Madrid coming to Kerala Blaster or something. We were like, yeah, okay. Well, yes. But anyway, there's nothing uh, true there. There are many fake things, fake rumors going out. Of course, when it comes to which, is, which concerns me, we have a contract. So I like being in Kerala Blasters. It's my honor. I'm very proud to be part of the great club. So there is nothing certain about that, like uh, about those fake rumors or whatever it was uh, going out. Then about DB, he's a great player, like uh, proving second year in a row that he can be the top scorer of the league. Of course, if there are any interest, especially that many, I'd say many clubs in this league um, uh, are looking around the league, saying if anybody performs well, so they have very weak, let's say, scouting, going around overseas, finding players. And then it happened also in the, in the previous season, 
I remember after first season with uh, Jorge Pereira, with Alvaro. So it happens that always some of our players, when they come and perform in Kerala Blasters, they go further on. Then when it comes to financial aspect, of course, when you want to keep those players, but at the end, if you cannot compete with some of the offers, that's the unwritten uh, law of the transfer market, you know. So there are clubs in, uh, in, uh, here in, in our league who, uh, who are always saying, you know, well, get, uh, get all the offers you have, then come to us, we'll give you more. So this is how it works in football you know, sometimes. So, of course, as a club, you want to keep your best players. There are some limits, there are some levels. We would like to keep our group uh, together, especially I think that the, many of them, they fit together to create good things. So we'll try later our best. You know, there are still a couple of games to, to be played till the end. Of course, Nimi is a great professional, you know, so that's, that's kind of football. We'll do our best to, to keep it. So my uh, second question would be that, you know, we were having a discussion yesterday only that uh, if the second most popular person in Kerala is after the chief minister is Mr. Ivan Kovar. <laughs> in such a way that if Ivan Kovar is contested an election against the chief minister, he can even defeat the chief minister. That is the popularity Ivan Kovar has in the Kerala people you know, for three years. That is the popularity of created. So, Seeing this popularity, seeing the people, the love people and affection people show to you, people popularity for your Ashan over there. So, uh, do you see it as a burden, as an over expectation the fans have, or do you see it as an opportunity to, you know, uh, to repay the trust, loyalty, and the passionate fans of Kerala? How do you see this? Well, the, look, there are many aspects. In it was, uh, if I'm not wrong, that was the first time that one uh, coach stayed on a longer term longer than uh, than one season in Kerala looking at the, at the past and then with the with the new with the owners and with the project and the vision that we created it's been now it will be three years we wanted to create those things on a longer term which means trying to build up the club that every year we participate and uh, we are among the best you know being in the playoffs fighting for the prizes and everything of course this year was a uh, kind of weird, very difficult, with many changes, many uh, issues, you know, injuries, then we were cut uh, with the Asian Cup, with some breaks and all these things, that you have to improvise, that you have to go with all those things. Uh, then, when, like I say, on a longer term, when you are being part of such a great project, and then when uh, you are being part of one great community, giving your best, uh, adapting to everything what is present there, of course, the, the fans, you can, you can never fake fans, you know, supporters, fans, emotions, these things you cannot fake. And then the fans, again, comparing to previous period, of course, you appreciate the way the team playing, the, the team is performing, the team is fighting, the players who are coming, being committed to the club, giving everything for the jersey, for the logo, not only the coaching staff, but the players as well. And these kind of things, you know, you find appreciation for that, that every day you want to give your best, because Kerala Blasters, uh, to be honest, in, in Kerala is kind of uh, state identity. It became kind of, you know, something that people love. And then when you give all your heart, of course, you get the appreciation, uh, not faking those things and everything. And that's why maybe we created that kind of emotion that every time we give all, uh, all of our heart, everything the best. And that's why I'm saying when you feel that emotion, when you feel that energy, support, you want to give everything, you want to be part of that club, you want to be part of that community. And that's why maybe it created, you know, the relationship that we have now. And again, I'm grateful for that. You know, I'm grateful for that as a, as a person on a, on a personal side, on a professional side. It's it's great feeling. It's great feeling that you get, get that kind of support and it only makes us more obliged to give even more every time we perform, home, away, whether we are in difficult moments, difficult situations, missing players, injuries, no injuries. And then, speaking about the um, owner's vision and community kind of wanting to build up some new uh, players, especially from that region, guys who are now performing in the young national teams, that's also about thinking about the future because you think about your project. It's not like working from, uh, let's say, season to season, trying to build up something, going back to zero, trying to build up something, going back to zero. Actually, that kind of appreciation, people recognize and say, we like having our team, what, you know, coaching staff, so we are giving our best. I'm really grateful for all that feelings and, uh, and support, so till the end, we'll give our best.
Like, sir, I'm going to put. Absolutely. My question would be like, you have been played and heavily affected by a lot of injuries in this season, including Luna, Sachin, and many more. You were at the top of the points table in January, and now you feel the eyes and shields, hopes are still alive after the arrival of key players from the injury. Oh, will we see Luna in the play tomorrow? Playing him tomorrow? No. No, Luna will not be there. He's still not ready to play this kind of game. He started practicing, uh, if I'm not uh, wrong, uh, a little bit more than 10 days ago with the uh, medical staff. Then he started a couple of days ago with us on a certain uh, topics of the training session. It's uh, still risky. So now in the next period we will choose the right moment because it's not, uh, it's not, it, it will not be clever, you know, to take huge risk throwing him. Uh, the moment that he's uh, still not ready, so we'll have to be careful because you know Luna is a captain, the guy who confirmed in the last uh, previous two seasons his quality. That you know, so we have to be careful with that because you know it's important. So so tomorrow he will not be in the pitch. So this is Aishans, who was she hopes to like. Yeah, but always, you know, of course, as a club, you always want to compete, you know. Look, we had, I think, a nice run till uh, December, you know, and then uh, even with all those injuries and suspensions, and then in, uh, in December, in January, we got cut, okay, players going out, national team, uh, uh, additional injuries that we get uh, in, a, in a Super Cup, many issues, for example, remember in a Super Cup, in a period of 17 days, we had 10 flights, you know, because we couldn't have the uh, accommodation in uh, in Odisha. So always we had to fly back and forth from Kolkata to play those games. So then on an 18 days gap, without training sessions, flying all the time, you get accumulation of injuries. Players coming from Asian Cup, regaining back the shape, and then of course missing all those players. The season got cut on two. That's it. You know, not only with us but many teams. Uh, was obvious that many players coming back from national team duties in uh, January with Asian Cup, they were not performing on the top level. So you get the season cut on two. Of course, we have uh, now points that we can sit in, um, let's say, top five for the moment, saying, OK, we hope for our playoffs. And then try to get best out of last four games to compete, try to build up in the... Because again, in the next two weeks, uh, with yesterday's arrival, so uh, you know, four games, ten flights, uh, you know, two training sessions. So it's kind of fixtures that you have to deal with it. So we'll have to probably relate to try to rotate one group of players. So how to because now playing in three days later, we're going to play at home against East Bengal. Three days later, we have to fly to Northeast. So it will be kind of let's improvise, try to fix the best thing we can, and then later on, of course, trying to build up on the players. Good afternoon, coach. Afternoon. Uh, you have been here in India for almost three years now. Yeah, third season. Okay, yeah. So players like Sahal, Ajit Singh, and Pritam are, have played at Delhi and Ishan. So uh, when they uh, play for the ICL clubs, they play at their optimum level and they score many goals. But when they face when they face the like uh, in the AFC Asian Cup, we fail to score a single goal, and even we got a humiliating defeat against uh, Afghanistan. So, what, were, what uh, do you think that the reason is that the players here are scoring goals, but at the national level they are not able to set their mark? Well, you know, um, the, let's start like this. If you want to solve, not only speaking about football or sport, if you want to solve any problem in your life, first step to solving that problem is that you admit to yourself that you have a problem. So now, uh, speaking about also your football federation, clubs, uh, football base of uh, fans, supporters, many people are not conscious about the reality and the level of international football. Which means, we play in ISL and we are conscious about the level that we are facing in ISL because people can see it live, can see it on TV, we are watching ISL, on TV we are watching also another, another international competitions, but facing some other uh, international clubs in Champions League, like this year we saw our best team of the league from last season, uh, Mumbai City, you know, they got overclassed in Champions League, which is not a shame, because that's reality, you know, then in the AFC as well, 
we got two of our teams, you know, a little bit uh, playing these games. But again, you've arrived to one level with, where the other teams are better. Okay, so then you have to accept the reality. Then on top of that, we arrive with the national team in Asian Cup, where uh, you get the results. I think even with the, you know, the best teams you had. But then again, it's not a shame. You have to sit down and say, okay, guys, what should we do next? or for the next period that we don't experience any more these kind of situations because many national teams, many countries have done that in the past 20 years. Not around, the, not speaking about the European side, South America, but Asia. Take Japan, South Korea 20 years ago, they had the same situation. Take Australia, Saudi Arabia, Qatar 20 years ago, it was the same. So then, reality of ISL, okay, the level of the league where we are playing, is on the lower level than some other competition. So then when we are, let's say, when we, so Indian national team are facing another competitions, then we face the higher level and say, oh, that's strong. So first you have to make your competition stronger. You have to go back and say, okay, we have to start building up new generation of better players, better players, better educated players, which can perform and play against those guys when they grow up and be on senior level. So it happened, uh, I think, 2017 when uh, India were, was playing a uh, World Cup for uh, youth under 17, where actually many players now in ISL they've been from that generation. So if you want to compete with your national team on one serious level in qualifications for World Cup, South Asia, whatever it is, you must build up at least one or two very good young national teams. Which means under 17, under 19s. Which, so these guys will be growing up, arriving to senior level, they be, will be strong, good, they will be playing in ISL, lots of games in a format of whatever it is with playoffs or not. And then maybe one day when you improve those levels of these players, maybe some of them will get a chance to go and play abroad, wherever in Asia. Maybe it is Emirates, Qatar, uh, Saudi, Iran, who knows? So then when you have that group of and base of these players, when they arrive on the level of senior national team, they will be strong. If there is no vision connected between federation and the clubs, it will never happen. So that must be kind of project which must be started from federation together with the clubs, you know. And that's why sometimes we are, we face our reality in ISL and we see the teams performing, playing against each other, competing, and you say, wow, it's nice football good games, but when you go out and face another international level that is on a higher level, then we say, whoa. So in my head, like vision of football coach or football worker, I would always ask myself, okay, what should I do? Because I want to arrive to that level. And it's been now 19 years that I live in Belgium. And I remember Belgium building up that new project when they were 60 something on a FIFA ranking list after failed qualification for World Cup 2006, where they changed the approach, changed everything, uh, how they had to build up and form new players, young players. And then I was facing and being part of that system, how Belgium managed to be five, six years first on FIFA ranking. So uh, a couple of days ago, I was watching the friendly game, England-Belgium in Wembley, you know, many young players, new generation. So it's a kind of when you continue because the core of football lies in uh, youth system. So if you keep producing, you know, a product with quality, it will be like oiled machine. And every year you get better and better things, you know, and then you will have more players in the market, you will have more quality. The quality of the league will go up, the quality of the teams will go up, the quality of the national teams will go up, and then you have a full process of one oiled machine that later just continue. And then in maybe no time, then you will go and play again good games against these teams, best teams of Asia, draws, you win, you qualify, you go easy, and then maybe games like against Afghanistan or some other teams, you will win easier. For the moment, that's the reality. And so nobody has to escape from there. So I think that it's normal process saying, look guys, okay, this is something that maybe we want to avoid in the future. So what should we do all together in a football? Together, federation, clubs, sitting down and making this new project saying vision, okay, this is how it has to be done. Then football is invented thing. You don't have to invent new things. 
maybe just go around and see some examples in another international countries and saying, okay, this we can implement in our football, this not, this we, and then you create your new thing, okay? This is how it has to be done. Many countries in Europe have done that in the previous 20, 25 years, many countries in South America, and I just mentioned Japan, you know, South Korea, China, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and that's true, that's reality. So nobody has to be ashamed of that or hide behind it. No, let's do it. So this kind of project, very interesting project in football. Yeah. So my last question would be that uh, the national team coach is a follow-up question of that. I mean, the national team coach constantly complains that it's not my uh, responsibility to produce uh, Indian strikers. It is the responsibility of the IS coaches and the players uh, to actually produce themselves. It's like uh, that is the reason. So. There's like Ishan, more prominent strikers, young strikers. So they're not getting much uh, game time. That is the question we ask. So, so do you think that uh, players like Ishan, players like uh, Azhar, Aikman, the ratio is definitely seven to four when you compare uh, Indian players and the uh, foreigners players. There is seven to four the ratio, but still players like Ishan are not getting much uh, time on the pitch. So do you think? He's uh, national team coach. He's right when he says that he doesn't have to produce. No, it's a job of the clubs. It's a it's a job of the youth system of the clubs saying we need to produce these kind of players with these profiles. So the clubs and the players, they're practicing and they're improving in the clubs and they're being produced in the clubs. The national team, that's confirmation. Okay, so the players, when they go to national teams, they confirm their quality. That's all. So the national team is like picking the best. That's the point that the Indian market in ISL is really small, speaking about ISL League and I League. The market is really small, okay? Every transfer window, half of the players, you know, under contract, you cannot get them because they're under contract. And then the small amount of players going around, you know, it's kind of merry goes around from club to club, and at the end you get nothing. So the national team coaches like, okay, we need the bigger core of players to select. And then many teams in ISL saying like, you know what? We don't care about the quality and forming young players, what we need and what we want to make the result. So what's the easiest way? Yeah, okay, you know what? I will buy some foreigners, especially on position. If you look previous 10 years, so mostly foreigners are on position of strikers or uh, central defenders, something that you miss. So as a uh, foot, Indian football or uh, federation, I would say, Guys, in our formation of young players, we need to produce more strikers, central defenders on certain positions, because then you will get the quality, and then the clubs will say, okay, then I don't need to bring those foreigners in those positions, because we have, you know, those players. And it goes again to quality. Everybody speaking, yeah, you know, increasing the back the level of uh, foreigners. No, I would say let's decrease the level of foreigners, Okay, let's give more chance to domestic players and let's say, I don't know, you can implement many uh, rules like having uh, at least uh, one player under 21 on the pitch or under 23 and you give chance to your players and then you work. This is how it goes. Of course, in the beginning, depending on quality, but that's the only way that you can improve the youth system, football, and in the end, who benefits the most? National teams. Otherwise, if you don't allow those players to develop in the level of youth and ISL or whatever senior football, then at the end who suffers the most national team. So and that's that's reality. So uh, I have a question of uh Sam. Uh Aprobe last past uh game key a pass to Aprobo they gave eight games in there, Bobby FC Goa gave it up. Baki Joby Bangalore FC, Punjab FC, uh FK Born uh Bagan Super Tax, then Chenning and FC. कहा um, first of all, yes, uh, we were going through a little bit of a phase since the break, but <coughs> we're training well, and the team is in good spirits, and and we are ready. I think tomorrow will, will be a good day for us, hopefully. Uh, 
football changes very fast. We've not performed to our best in the last few games. Like you said, we only won one out of the last five, maybe. But we're in good spirit right now. We're training well. The team is is in good shape, and, and tomorrow hopefully we can we can do well. And the second part of the question. Um, that's the difference between foreign players and, and the local players uh, and that's something we look at and we try to to get better at and, and emulate on the field. Thank you guys. Davis.